Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek. I'm your instructor for your uh, 430 um, undergraduate operating systems uh, <laughs> class. Um, today, we're going to be looking at uh, the basics of memory and looking at the performance of memory when we have caching, so le different levels of caching. All right, so this is from Unit 1, Chapter 1 of your textbook here. Um, so our objective today is um, I first want to talk a little bit about the, the physical characteristics of memory. Okay, so part of the goal of chapter one is just to make certain that we have a common background about uh, the parts of a computing system and in general, kind of at a high level, how the, the parts fit together and work together to perform computations. Okay, so and, and in this one, we're going to be looking at the memory component uh, because it had a couple of... of um, of um, specific things, concepts that I wanted to make certain that people understood, which is why I'm making a specific video about the memory here for Unit 1. So in particular, I, I wanted to make certain that, that you understand this out, this um, concept of lo the, the locality of reference in regards to memory, okay? So, um, and, and why that's important in terms of building or engineering a computing system, okay? And we're also going to look at a few formulas, a few problems in this video. So you might get some problems like these on your tests on how to analyze the performance of a multi-level memory hierarchy, okay? Um, and I also want to make certain that you understand that, that this basic idea can be extended across many levels, all right? So, um, memory. Uh, memory uh, is... is Kind of defined by the constraints on it, okay? So, so you need to understand these. So um, we have constraints on the amount of memory that we can have, uh, the, the speed of the memory uh, that we might be able to get for a computing system, um, and its cost, okay? So uh, in terms of the amount, I mean, you know, more is always better in, from the point of view of, like, writing a program, okay? So um, uh, from Lots of lots of applications require some minimum amount of memory to work at all, and for many applications, the more memory you have, the better it's going to be. So, especially if we're talking about a modern era where we want to do big data, or machine learning, or data analytics, you know, we want lots and lots of memory, and we want the, the memory to be fast. Okay, so the faster the memory is, that 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 means that we can finish our programs, our computations more faster, or um, you know um, the, the saying the same thing, um, we can process more data in the same amount of time, right? So um, if we have a problem that's linear in time, uh, if, we have, if we can get computer memory that's twice as fast, it means that we can either finish the problem in half the time or we can do twice as much work in the same amount of time with a, you know, with a speed of a 200 computer. But there's, there's a trade-off, okay? So uh, memory, uh, different kinds of memory, can cost, well, do cost, and they can potentially cost a lot of money, okay? So, so, and, and unfortunately, to get really fast memory, that also costs, right? So it costs money to get lots of memory, it costs a lot of money to, to get faster memory, okay? So, so we have this trade-off. So we, we, we can't get the perfect machine because either we have to spend, you know, too much money, uh, more money than we're willing to in order to get you know, as fast as possible with as much memory as, as possible. Or we have to make some trade-offs, you know, not get quite as much, but, but have to do with, with not quite as fast of, of, a, of a computing system, all right? So our, our priority mentioned these, so we have these trade-offs. So the faster access time, um, the greater the cost is going to be per bit, okay? So it costs money to make faster memory. The bigger the capacity, the smaller the cost per bit, Okay, so there's actually kind of an inverse relationship in that if you build really big things, often that means that, that there's a, um, um, a um, the, the, well, that the, that the cost goes down when you get, you know, large amounts of memory in, in our, the hardware, basically. Um, so, and, and the greater the capacity, the, the slower the access speed in general, okay? So, what, what we mean by that, our textbook talks about the memory hierarchy, okay? So, uh, you can think of memory as a hierarchy from uh, high level to low level, or from, from the top to the bottom here. So, the things at the top, uh, so, so as we go down the hierarchy, uh, the cost per bit is decreasing, capacity is getting bigger, and access time 
um, is increasing. Okay, well, so that what that means is that registers, which are which is a type of memory that's right on the CPU, those are going to be uh, extremely expensive. So it has a high cost per bit, um, and it's going to be very small. Since it's so expensive, there's there's not very many registers. Typically, in the order of ten to a hundred registers um, on your CPU. But it's very fast, okay, so the access time is very fast, okay. Um, and then if you go down to like cache and then main memory, so main memory uh, is much bigger, it's much bigger capacity, so, so capacity is increasing than registers, um, but it, it's much slower. So in, in fact, it's about an order of magnitude slower to go from register to cache, um, and then it's another order of magnitude slower to go from cache to main memory, okay. So I mean, it's, so it's ten times slower in terms of the access time. Um, uh, and, and then another thing, so uh, keep this in mind for the next slide, so as you go down here, usually we have a de decreasing frequency of access to the memory by the CPU, okay? So what that means is that the things that are in the registers, we're accessing, they're in the registers for a reason, because we need them right now, we need to do a lot of stuff with them. And, and things that are closer to the top here are going to be being accessed more frequently, and things that are down here, like offline storage, we need to access very infrequently. Like maybe, you know, like like offline storage can actually be like like on tape and stuff. We might not access it for weeks or day or years or something like that. So, um, so you need to understand how to compute the performance of a two-level memory. Okay. So, um, so we're going we're to apply this in the next slide here. So, um, uh, and, and these these letters, these variables mean this basically. So, in order to compute the effective access time, so so what we're talking about the the um, uh, the general setup here is that we have two levels of memory. So, if, if I can go back to the previous slide, think of our two levels. One level is the cache, and the second level is main memory. So, cache is the faster memory, or the or the the top level and main memory is the slower memory here, all right? So, um, so among those two, and, and I use TC to mean the time for the cache, so the access time for the cache, uh, and TM is the access time for the memory, okay? So we can use uh, basically just a simple weighted average to compute the effective access time for a two-level cache. So to get the effective access time, it's um, uh, it's, it's really an average, so it's if, so if the hit ratio is the how what, what the percentage is or, or what the um, probability is that the piece of data that we need is in the uh, the, the top level here, so it's in the faster memory. Okay, so if we have a 95% hit ratio or 0.95 hit ratio, that means 95% of the time uh, we can get it from the faster memory in the cache. Okay. So, and then the, the miss here, so, um, uh, miss, um, oh, I didn't define it, is, is basically the, 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 the inverse of the hit ratio, okay? So if we have a hit ratio of 95% or 0.95, that means that we're going to have a miss ratio of 0.05 or 5%, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll put some numbers to these so you'll, you'll be able to understand better if you look at an example here in the next slide, okay? So, and then the last thing that I want to point out before going on, though, is that basically what happens in a two-level memory, if it's in the cache, then we just access, you know, if it's in the the, um, the, the faster memory, we just access it from the, fa get it from the faster memory and use it, okay? If it's in the slower memory, what we do is we first transfer it to the faster memory. So, so we have to spend the time to access the memory from the slower memory, that's what the TM is, and then we reperform um, the the access on on our cache. Okay, so that's why it's TC plus TM. So, so we have to add together the the access time for the cache plus the access time for the memory. Okay, and then this this is really just a weighted average. So you know if it's ninety five percent of the time it's in the the cache. So if we take 0.95 times the time in cache plus 0 0.05 times the combined time to get it from memory and then and then to redo it and access from cache. That will give us what's known as a weighted average and that will tell us what the effective or what the average access time is uh, for this system. Okay. 
Um, and you can expand this out, so we'll later use this formula. So if you just multiply, you know, so, so m is 1 minus h, so, so the miss ratio is, is, is 1 minus the hit ratio, okay? And if you multiply these out, this is another, so these are all equivalent, okay? But this is another way that we can calculate the effective um, access time if we just take the, the access time for the cache plus the access time for the memory minus the hit ratio times the access time for the memory. That will give you the same value. So let, let's, um, um, let's show an example um, just to make this concrete, to make certain that you understand, okay? So, um, so this is typical of, of what memory might look like. So our cache might have a total size. So our cache is going to be smaller because it's more expensive than our RAM. So caches are fast memory and RAM is our slower memory in, in our hierarchy here, okay? So we might only have a thousand bytes of RAM, but it might be an order of magnitude, so ten times faster. So it just takes a tenth of a microsecond to access one of the values from cache, right? Um, and RAM is much bigger, um, and it, because it, it's much less expensive, but it's much slower. So it's an order of magnitude slower. So it takes a whole microsecond to add, to get a value from RAM, all right? So. For example, th this this figure should make sense to you if, you if you think about it a little bit. So if the hit ratio is 1, that means 100% of the time we can get the value from cache. It means every everything we need fits in cache, and we never have to go out to the slower memory. Then the average time is going to be um, T1. I, I, this, I, mean, I meant TC here. So, so this is supposed to be the, the time for the cache. The faster. Level 1 is the, is the faster memory, and level 2 is the slower memory. This is from our textbook, this figure here. So, so anyway, if, if we have 100% or a, a, a 1.0 hit ratio, then it's just going to be, you know, uh, takes, on average, it's going to take one microsecond, okay? If we have a zero hit ratio, so that means that we have 100% misses, right? That means that every time we have to add together, so every time we have to first go to the slower memory for one microsecond and transfer it to cache, and then we have to access it from cache, so, so it's going to be... Uh, TM plus TC, or 1.1 microsecond in this case. And basically, if you do that weighted average, it, it's, it's just a nice linear relationship. So you can figure out what 95% is or what 9 so, so we can ask the question. So I'm just going to use Python as a calculator here. But, but uh, So let's say my time for the cache is 1, or is point zero, zero point 0.1, right? And my time for memory is is one microsecond, right? And let's say the hit ratio is um, is is ninety percent or zero point nine, right? So that's our hit ratio. So in that case, the effective um, the, the the effective um, 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 access time or the average access time is basically the weighted average. So it's the the hit rate times the, the faster memory, time cache, plus the miss rate. Uh, let me first calculate the miss rate. So misses are equal to uh, 1 minus hit, okay? So hit is 0.9, and miss is actually 0 0.01, okay? Uh, so the effective um, access time is basically the hit ratio times the, the cache um, plus the miss ratio times the, the, the access for memory, All right? So the answer is, so notice that, that it's, it's one micro, it's, it's a tenth of a microsecond for cache, but on average, if we have a 90% hit ratio, on average, you know, so 10% of the time we have to go to the slower memory, but 90% of the time we can get the stuff from the faster memory. So on average, the effective access rate is 0.19 microseconds, all right? Um, so, and, and I won't do, so, so if, so, of course, you're, you would expect the effective rate to be much better if we have a higher uh, hit ratio. Okay, so if the hit ratio is 99%, that means that the miss ratio is uh, 1%, right? Then you'll find that you've got an effective hit rate pretty close. You know, it's basically 0 0.11, but it's, it's not too much slower than the... Um, than the, the, the a tenth of a microsecond access time um, if we have a 100% hit ratio, okay? 
So that, that's basically how this you know works in order to, to figure out the performance on a two-level um, memory. All right. Now. Um, I won't spend as much time on this one. I'll just go through it. So you can ex extend that basic idea to three or, or more levels. So, and, and in fact, it's not unusual to have like five or six levels in a modern computing system because there's often at least three levels of cache, right? So we didn't draw that, if I can go back into this figure, but, but there's actually usually a level one, level two, and even level three cache in a computing system. So that means that if you think of registers as your first level, we've got three more here, that's four. And then there's five. And then if you're using virtual memory, uh, you do memory paging out to um, your hard drives. And so that ends up being like a sixth level in your memory hierarchy um, that you're dealing with. Okay, but so you can uh, calculate the average or the effective um, access time uh, for three or four, or however many levels. Um, like this, so, so it's not too tough. So, so what, what's it, let's say we have three levels. So we have let's say we have two levels of cache. Um, level one cache takes a tenth of a microsecond. Level two cache takes one microsecond, and and level three or or, or main memory takes twenty microseconds. So it's it's not ten, but it's twenty times um, uh, slower than um, level two cache here, right? Um, so. As we just did on the previous one, we could, we could figure out what the effective uh, access time is of the system for F level two in RAM, right? So it's just um, the if, if our hit ratio is 99%, so if 99% of the time the stuff is in level two cache that we need in the system, you just take 99 times one plus the miss ratio 0 0.1 times 20 times 21. Uh, so I need to add those together. Um, um, I might have I might have missed that. I'm just thinking on my previous slide there that I, I forgot to add together the, uh, the 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 two values there. So so here the reason why this is 21 is is because you need to first if it's a miss you need to first get the value from RAM into level two cache and then you restart the the read or the write um, and you get the value then from the level two cache. All right. So. Um, Anyway, if you work that out, then you end up with an effective or an, or an average of 1.2 microseconds for a 99% hit ratio from L2 to RAM. Okay. So if I want to calculate then the effective ratio for the, the, the three-level memory, after I've calculated it for the, the last two levels, I can just use that effective rate um, um, with level one um, uh, to, to find out the effective rate among or, or the average rate among all three levels. All right. So it's simply going to be the hit ratio for level one times the time for level one plus the miss ratio times uh, the, the addition of the time for level one plus the effective rate for the level two. So notice here we're just using this average for level two uh, RAM, for level two and level three that we just calculated. All right. So if, if you work that out, you end up with a, an effective rate for the system of 0.16 microseconds. So, um, so, uh, so I want to talk about, you know, so why do we have multiple levels of, of memory, uh, multiple memory hierarchy like that? Um, well, part, I've, I've already answered that, that question partially because there's no perfect memory. So uh, if we could build a computer where all the memory was, was made of like the, the same stuff that we make registers out of that's on the CPU, we would do that, except that computer would cost uh, uh, thousands or millions of times more than than, a, than it would if, if we do it the way we do it now, where we have a hierarchy of memory, okay? So we would go back to needing to have computers that cost millions or tens of millions of dollars um, in order to build them, even for ones um, um, with the size of memory of like a, a personal desktop. So um, there's some things you need to understand. So memory references by the CPU tend to cluster. This is known as the locality of reference. All right. Um, 
So, and, and if you think about this, this should make sense to you because the way we write programs, th think about how you typically write a program. You write a program where it executes the instructions like in a sequence. You, write, you execute the first instruction, the second instruction, the third one, and so on. Okay? Even if you have a loop, you're mostly executing the same instructions. There is a little bit of a jump, but, then, but you're mostly, you know, every time you're going to be accessing, um, you know, executing instructions that are close together. The same happens for data. If you're accessing data, it's usually in like array. So you access the, the value at index one, and then the value at index two, and then so on. Okay. So 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 memory references, whether you're reading or writing data, tend to cluster. Okay. Um, and because of that, we can organize data so that the percentage of access to each lower level is substantially less than that of the level above. Okay. And that's what we mean by the hit ratio. So because of the locality of reference, we can build caching systems such that we can get hit ratios of 90, 95, 99%. So that 95, 99% of the time, we, have, we, only have, we can go to the faster memory and get the data that we need. It's already there in the faster memory. We don't have to go down to slower memory to get it. Okay. Um, and, and, that's, and, and that's kind of, in a nutshell, why we need the memory hierarchy. So we can extend this over multiple levels to engineer systems that are cost and performance effective. Okay? So since we, since we can't make a perfect memory, we can at least get systems that are good enough so that they're fast enough and we have enough memory uh, by, by having this multi-level hierarchy of, of, of RAM and cache and, and hard drives and things. All right? Um, okay. So a little bit more about uh, some of the properties of cache memory. Um, so um, it's invisible to the operating system. So kind of a after this unit one, we won't spend a lot of time with about cache because it is actually implemented at the hardware level, and, and operating systems are a software kind of a thing. Okay, uh, but it does interact with the memory management hard hardware. So we have to be aware of cache when you're building or designing an operating system. And the other thing about about um, cache is that memory management and, and paging basically use the same mechanism as caching does. Okay, so if you understand one, you kind of understand the other. And we're gonna, gonna and we are gonna talk about memory management in this class. So, so and and um, you should be aware that I mean that the CPU must access the memory at least once per instruction cycle. So. Uh, um, I mean, can you think of why that's the case? Hopefully you've read the, um, you know, you've gone over the, uh, the hypothetical machine at this point, and you, you know the fetch-execute cycle, right, that we talked about in relationship to that, right? So, I mean, and basically, CPU has to access memory at least once per instruction because we fetch the next instruction every, we, we fetch an instruction every time from memory um, to be run next, okay? So, so at least there's a fetch, and there might be more than one memory access because we might also read some data or write some data um, as well for an instruction in a fetch execute cycle. Right? So. Um, so as we've already stated here, so why have cache? Well, the problem is, is that the CPU execution is effectively limited by memory cycle time, okay? So CPU cycle times are typically much, much faster than things like RAM memory speeds, right? Um, and if we didn't have caching and registers, uh, the CPU would actually not be able to go as fast as it could because it would have to wait for every fetch execute cycle to fetch the next instruction from main memory. So that's why we need to, to implement caching mechanisms. So... so and the reason why ca caching mechanisms work is because this principle of locality holds. Most instructions um, uh, cluster. So if we need one instruction, we're often going to need the instruction right after, and the instructions close to it. Okay. So um, a cache contains a, a copy, you know, so only a small portion of main memory. Um, so the, the basic algorithm for a cache is that we first check if data... If, if the data that's needed is in, in cache, so if it's, a, if it's in the faster memory, that's known as a hit, if it is, all right? If it's not, that's a miss, and, that, and the miss is bad because then we're going to have to go to the slower memory, so the CPU is going to have to wait for the data it needs to transfer up out of the slower memory and get it into the cache and then into the registers for the CPU, okay? 
But this is important here. This is the reason why caching works and also why memory paging works as well when we talk about um, um, memory management. So when you, when you load in data in a caching scheme, you don't just load the single byte or the single piece of data that you need. You load a block of memory. So a block of memory is read into cache whenever you transfer values from the slower to the faster memory. Okay? Um, and the reason why that is, again, because of the locality of reference. Okay? So when we do that, when we, when we transfer a whole block, and, and a block might be like, like a kilobyte, or four kilobytes are typical block sizes. Um, so w when you transfer multiple uh, uh, data um, so, so, or, or multiple instructions, it's very likely that that you know the one instruction that we need because of the miss, we're go then going to likely need others after that or close to that because of the, the locality of reference. All right. And because of that, because we transfer a block, that that's why we can maintain high hit ratios for our faster memories in these kinds of caching schemes, all right? So yeah, cache is basically just a memory between your CPU and slower memory. Um, and as I've already mentioned, you know, it's typical to have at least three levels of cache if you look at modern, you know, CPUs today. Um, so... Um, Cache is basically, so, so main memory is structured as just a, an array of bytes, right? So, so you should know that from talking about the parts of a computer system or reading about the parts of a computer system. So uh, cache is structured by, you know, we, we pull in a block where each block has some length. You know, so that's known as the, the line length or as the page length, if we're talking about like a paging system, right? So, and, and, and this is going to be a fixed size. So it's going to be K bytes, basically. Like, so typically like a kilobyte or 512K for like a smaller cache or something like that. Um, and then I won't go over the algorithm in detail. So we already talked about that, you know. So, so you have to check if it's a hit or a miss. Um, uh, and the main thing is that if it's a miss, um, you, f you first transfer a block uh, that contains the data you need from the slower to the faster memory, then you restart um, um, and, and re, um, re read or re redo the write from the, um, the cache then, once you've transferred your block, all right? So, um, let's look at some uh, quick questions here. Uh, just to review some things, make certain you understood what we were talking about in this, in this video. So in a, a two-level memory hierarchy, if we make five references and three memory references were in, in cache, while two of the references need to be uh, fetched from memory, what's the hit ratio for that, okay? So this is typical of, of a multiple choice question you might see on the test, the first test for this class, right? So in this case, um, um, you, know, you just have to know that the cache is the higher memory, the, or the faster memory, the higher level memory, um, and, t and the other, the, 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 you know, main memory was the slower memory. So here, the, the hits were, the, we had three hits, basically. So three out of five, or 60%, in this case, of, of a hit ratio. Um, you ought to understand, you know, the, the relationship as you pre proceed down the memory hierarchy, right? So uh, which of these is true, right, by process of elimination? So as you go down the hierarchy from registers to cache to, to main memory, R is the cost per bit increasing or decreasing? It's actually decreasing, right? So the, the memory in for your registers and the fast one is very expensive. It has a high cost per bit, okay? So, so it's not A, um, and it's not decreasing capacity either. So as you go down the hierarchy, so there, there's very small registers because they're very expensive. There, there's very few of them. But as you go down further, there, there's much more cache and there's even much, much more uh, main memory RAM. So you're actually increasing capacity. So here C is the answer for this one. Um, it's true, though, that access time increases as you go down. So it's very fast to get data from registers or cache, and it's much slower to get it from main memory or from hard drives and things. All right? um, let's look at another problem. You might see a problem like this um, on the test, like, like a written question um, on the test. 
So consider a memory that has these characteristics. So what's the cost of a megabyte of main memory? Okay. The, the, I mean, these first two are just kind of simple, right? So except, um, um, you know, you should understand that, that just to throw a little bit of some difficulty in here, we gave the cost in cents per bit. We didn't specify how many bits are in a byte, but if you assume that, the, that there's the typical eight, eight bits in a byte, so it's going to be, um, you know, um, so that's a tenth of a, or that's a hundredth of a cent per bit. So it's going to be eight one hundredths of a cent per, per byte, basically. Um, so anyway, if we have a mega, megabyte of main memory, that's eight megabits, um, so eight million bits. And then, you know, if you multiply by one one hundredth, um, you get 8,000, right? Uh, 8,000 cents or $80. Uh, and what's the cost of one megabyte of main memory uh, using uh, cache technology? Oh, I'm sorry, um, um, I did it wrong. So, so uh, the first one was for main memory, so you have to you have to multiply by 0 .001. Um, so, so yeah, eight million uh, times is like dividing by a thousand, so you get eight thousand um, or eighty dollars in that case, right? Um, so for uh, for cache though, it's it's, not, it's a easy way to do that is, is just Ten times more expensive, so you, you'd expect it to cost eight hundred dollars for a megabyte of cash, given these characteristics here. Um, but finally, here's uh, using the idea of the performance of a two-level memory here. This is just two-level memory. So if the effective access time is ten percent greater than the cache access time, what's the hit ratio? Okay. So th this is doing something in reverse, okay? So given, if we can go back and look at, like, um, this formula, given the effective, we know the effective uh, access time, can we find out what the hit ratio is? So an easy thing to do is just use this formula here, um, and then we can calculate the, the hit ratio, okay? So I'll show that. Um, but yeah, in this, in this case, since the effective access time is 10% greater than the cache access, access time, so if the cache access time is 100 nanoseconds, that means that the effective access time must be 110 nanoseconds. So then find the hit ratio, all right? So in that case, if, if you use that third form of, of the formula, the effective, ratio, effective access time was 110. Um, if you plug these in and rearrange, you find that that implies that we must have a... Um, hit ratio of 99.16 um, for the system to get that effective um, access time, all right? Um, okay, so that was it for this video. Um, hopefully that gives you some more information about cache. So these are some important concepts. You need to understand the locality of reference and, and basically how caching works in a system. We're going to be using these concepts later on in, in lots of different places in this system, in, in this um, class. So. Um, okay, so that's it for this video, and I will see you then in the next video.